scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Can I tell you this? Make up your mind that what my parents could not give me, they may be sincere people. They did the best with what they knew to do. But in the name of Jesus, I'll be able to give my children what I did not receive. Don't transfer the same pain and hardship to your children. Make up your mind that under my watch, the house of the Lord will never suffer because these hands will bring resources for the lifting of the name of Jesus. The decision to be financially independent. Write this for reference as we prepare to wrap up Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 6. I'm telling you this scripture is a very powerful and prophetic scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Maybe we should read it. I know our time is up, but let me just read it very quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. We're reading just four verses, 13 to 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 16. The Bible shows us in a very graphic way the danger of not contending for financial independence this wisdom have i seen also under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom read on with me now it says there was a little city and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it 15 now there was found in it a poor wise man who was found in that city a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man it's in your bible 16 then said i wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. it takes wisdom and wealth to be had are we learning make up your mind that you are going to walk in the reality of the blessings of the Lord not for some competitive selfish carnal reason no I am telling you this when God grants do you know we are not teaching on finances here but many of the people who talk on finances with, with all due respect largely many people are not getting it the way it should be taught this is why it keeps fueling carnality and lust in people You prosper even as your soul prospers. When there is anything wrong with your soul, everything you have gathered or acquired is nonsense. But let me give you this. There are only two assignments of money in the life of an individual. Number one, the first assignment of financial resources is as a tool for time redemption. The first assignment of money in your life is to redeem time 
the unit of destiny is time you can use money to buy time number two the second assignment of money in the life of a believer a kingdom-minded believer it's for efficiency so money only has two assignments in a believer's life time redemption and efficiency if god grants you resources and you buy a car what is that car doing redeeming time that's it if god grants you an opportunity and you move from a tenant to a landlord it has only helped to make your life efficient instead of smuggling six children in one room now you have a three four five bedroom you can even create a prayer room you can create all kinds of things so it gives you the convenience to live an efficient life everybody say time redemption one more time say time redemption say efficiency this is why believers desire the availability of financial resources for time redemption and for efficiency if you are able to pay the school fees of your children without thinking about it and you can send them to any school without the psychological stress of raising school fees one naira one naira per time it has helped your life to be efficient so you can focus on the things of god as a man of god when god blesses you financially he has given you time so you can lock yourself for three days seeking his face and not worry about bills efficiency when people are taught prosperity from a correct kingdom perception or perspective they become blessed and their hearts are never connected to those things finally have we been blessed so far the only promise you are going to give me is that you will use everything that i'm teaching you here that that the next time god will grant us the grace to see when i look at you where you used to be i will not be able to find you there again that you will be a thousand times over the final decision pay attention our time is up the sixth is the decision to build quality destiny relationships write it down ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 to 12 please give us that scripture the decision to build quality destiny relationships can i tell you this the command be fruitful also means be relational because the only way to be fruitful is through relationships it takes a husband and his wife to have a child two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor we are reading to verse 12 verse 10 now two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor verse 10 says for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone the key word is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him up uh-huh two more verses again if two lie together they have heat but how can one be warm alone verse 12 i wish you can see it for us to read together verse 12 and if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly or easily broken look at me one of the greatest things that you can do with your life and the times that god has given you is to invest in building quality relationships can i be honest with you many people do not have relationships that were intentionally built many people have circumstantial relationships circumstances just brought certain people into your life there are three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships you meet people every day and the bible mandates you love them believers non-believers alike you meet them every day number two there are seasonal relationships for instance your classmates your schoolmates within the time you are together in that institution or that training taking that course 
you are together and you may be friends but the third and the highest level they are called destiny relationships or covenant relationships these are people who believe what you believe the foundational pillars of your convictions are also what they believe and you have a covenant of fellowship that you are going to be there for one another through the thick and thin. You will not just be there to stand together. That when they are on the ground, you will come and stand by them and help them and lift them. Can I tell you this? Woe betides a man if everybody around you is a psychophant just looking for your money or your titles or anointing. They will tell you because men are intrinsically selfish. However, there are still sincere people. And my prayer is not just that you pray and say, God, give me one. Be one first. Hallelujah. Look up, please. We're wrapping up. When Jesus walked upon the earth, for as long as he was celebrity Jesus, there were crowds looking for him. Some were looking for him for food. Some were eyeing all kinds of things, hoping that one day when he becomes King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he will put James and Peter, all kinds of motives. But when Jesus handed himself to die, all of them ran away. When Jesus was going to Golgotha, my question, where was blind Bartimaeus? Where was the woman with the issue of blood? Where was even Lazarus who was raised from the dead? Everybody ran away. Can I be honest with you? You must obtain the grace and the courage at this level in life to edit your relationships. Don't treat everybody the same. They are not the same. Categorize your relationships into outer court, inner court, and most holy place. Not everybody should have that kind of access to your life. Are you learning wisdom here? Someone comes into your life and in five minutes, you've told him everything about your destiny. You've told him everything about your past. You've told him that, oh, your dad has a problem with your mom. And tomorrow they go around and betray you and backstab you and destroy you. You need wisdom. It is not every visitor that comes to your house that you take to your bedroom. No, there are visitors who will stand at the gate. There are others who will come to the living room, but there are others you can literally take them to your bedroom and sit down because you know that even if you are in prison, they will come and stand with you and say, we die together. Can I be sincere with you? This is one of the lessons that I have learned, respectfully speaking, in the life of our fathers of faith. They may not have many people around their lives, but my goodness, God has given them the gift of men. There are men who will stay like the mighty men of David in the cave of Adullam. Let me ask you a question as I round up. If you are in trouble today, God forbid, is there anybody in your life that you can call by 2 a.m. and say sincerely, there is an issue with my rent now. It's not like I am careless. And the person says, over my dead body, for as long as you are alive, I'm alive. I will not see you go through this. Hear me. If there is nobody like that in your life, you are sitting on a time bomb. Can I be, I want to be honestly, even when Saul wanted to kill David and frustrated him, David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? I have learned this as a lesson, gleaning from the wisdom of the fathers. Can I be honest with you? This is an assignment to everyone here. Write a list of the five most important men in your life. People you know today who love you and will sacrifice anything for you invest in those relationships don't generalize and treat everybody the same way no there are people today if you call and say i i need i need 500 000 
they will tell you well I will help you how could you put them in the same category with someone who can stab you with a knife even if they give you learn wisdom I'm teaching you this there are people today if you call them and say look I see that lust is already growing in me pride is already growing in me they'll say no not when I'm there let's declare a three-day fast I will stand with you I will pray with you can I be honest with you as you are rising in life and in leadership you must start praying not for a crowd but for this man Lord from the crowd select this man bring them to my life there are men who will vow and say even if you go to be with the Lord today your children will not beg for bread when they are alive can I be honest with you there are many of our parents in old age today they did not spend their days searching for quality destiny relationships and investing in it and you would see some of them move and they will tell you I lived in US for 10 years I know this one I know this one but they are still in a position today where not one of their children can have a job anything money can buy relationships can also buy relationships are currencies don't use money alone to buy things use relationships to buy things this is one lesson I've learned in ministry as we pray man of God young man young woman hear the word of the Lord it is time for you to build quality relationships this is one of the reason why God brings a convergence of a conference like this so that you can have men and women some of you your destiny helper is the person seated near you he may not be wearing the kind of shoe and the kind of cloth you see be careful where you look down on people you may be looking down the next 10 years of your life learn to honor men learn to respect people respect those above you respect your contemporaries respect your subordinates and you have bought the future I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing I set before you these six master decisions that decide the destinies of men I cannot force you but my advice even this afternoon is choose life rise upon your feet someday you will listen to this message again but this time around you will listen to it with your children all around your table someday you will listen to this message but you will listen to it with millions and billions in your bank accounts someday you will listen to this message again but you will listen to it with mantles upon your head someday you will listen to this message but you will listen to this message alongside a congregation of a crowd like this listening to you but I pray for you that someday you will not listen to this message and regret and say why did I not make a decision one prayer point I speak over your life and we're done for this session father I obtain grace from heaven you have given me the keys that can change my life I obtain grace lift your voice and pray I obtain grace I obtain grace the Lord has spoken once I pray that you will hear and hear again go ahead and pray that decisions decide destiny the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to contend for superior belief systems the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment to live a purpose-driven life the decision to contend for your health and your physical well-being the decision to be financially empowered to be financially and economically independent finally the decision to build quality destiny relationships hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Appreciate the time. I apologize. I know I've stretched us a bit. But I want to pray one prayer right now for sake of time. I promise you that I was going to pray for the sick. Sadly, we may not be able to do that. I'm sure that another time God will grant us grace. But I want to speak over your life and your destiny. I want you to believe it. Men are made by the words that come upon them. You don't have to kneel. Please, I want you to believe. We did not invent this strategy. The fathers have spoken over us. And it has brought us to the grace that we, we have today. This is a baton. We are not the inventors of it. We only received it too. I want to pray for someone. Maybe not everybody. But I know that there is someone scattered in this congregation. Who has fasted. Who has prayed. Who has prepared their hearts. And you are saying, sir, you don't have to come out. You don't have to come out. Right where you are, I want to pray for you. Even those under the anointing, just help them as I pray. You don't have to bring them out. But please, whether you are an usher or not, anyone under the anointing, just help them. I want to pray for you. Truly, there are graces and there are mantles. We are made by the graces that rest upon us. I do not want to end this session without speaking over your life. I want you to receive every prayer. I want to activate certain dimensions in your spirit man. Some of you have seen this in your dreams. Some of you have seen it in your visions. Some of you know that the hand of God is upon you. Right now, I declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, Leketesh, Karis, at the count of three, that fire, let it come upon you and ignite you, set you on fire to do marvelous things. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take that fire right now. 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 Help them, please. Now, hear me. Hear me. I don't know how possible this will be. Listen, I've graciously been given about five minutes or so. Now, please, if someone is under the anointing, I just want to bring them out here. Just out here if you can. It will require both the ushers and every other person. I want to pray for you. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus, the name that is above all names. Hear me? As you shout that name, such fire will ignite you and you will be set ablaze for many of you there will be activations of the gift of the spirit are you ready now at the count of three i stand upon the grace of our father and i declare to you let there be that impartation one two three shout jesus take that grace take that anointing take that grace that empowerment fire upon your destiny fire upon your life in the name of jesus you will never be the same never be the same never be the same i ignite your prayer life i ignite your destiny by the power that raised christ from the dead step into a new season in the name of Jesus step into a new season now hear me in Jesus name now listen carefully please help them we're praying hear me there are people here the call of God is upon your life and God has been working upon you I want to pray right now that fire is coming upon you apostolic fire prophetic fire at the count of three anyone here who has the call of God one two three take that fire 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 in the mighty name of Jesus hear me in this end time, there are women that are rising up. 
after the order of Deborah, there are women that are warriors in the spirit. I pray for you, wherever you are, may this fire come upon you right now. May this fire come upon you right now. There are some of you, hear me, some of you are kingdom financiers. You represent the next generation of men and women that God will be trusting with resources. I don't know where you are, but everywhere you are under the sound of my voice, I stretch my hands. May that anointing come upon you right now. Receive that anointing now. Receive that anointing now. Receive that anointing now. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. Your life Hear me. Now, listen. Praise the Lord. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. At the count of three, you are going to shout that name again. Every embargo of delay sitting on anyone's the to say you will not go forward by the privilege of the grace of our fathers in the name of jesus at the count of three may the mantle for speed come on your destiny are you ready to shout jesus one two three shout jesus delay be broken delay be broken delay in destiny fulfillment be broken your life speed upon your destiny speed upon your life hallelujah hallelujah now hear me hear me there is a grace for prayer that makes a man's altar to come on fire I don't know who did prays for this grace but I stretch my hands Katasko Delegata the grace for prayer an intercession take that grace now take that grace now the fire upon your altar let it keep burning day and night there is a grace for favor hear me there is a real grace for favor that can make men come to attend to your needs i stretch my hands you may not have an uncle you may not have an auntie you may not have a sponsor but right now in the name of jesus upon this altar i prophesy any destiny helper that needs to arise and locate your destiny i command may they find you now Hallelujah. Please go back. Please go back. If you are not under the anointing, just go back. Please. Don't worry. Just go back. Everyone will receive. The only people out here are those under the anointing. Don't worry. Now hear me. I was given five minutes to pray for the sick. I want you to lay your hands, any part of your body where you are trusting God, 
for miracles at subsequent sessions you can testify but i want to pray for you right now lay your hands very quickly i believe in miracles i want you to agree with me as i pray in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every spirit of infirmity plaguing your body your destiny i command that it lets you go right now in jesus name now i decree and declare in the name of jesus the son of the living god be healed right now be healed right now my grain headaches be healed in jesus name blood help them please blood conditions be healed in the name of jesus every genotype here sickle cell anemia we change that genotype right now in the name of jesus christ hear me anyone under the sound of my voice called barren i stand upon this altar and i speak over your life nine months from now return with your miracle children every blood disease every blood condition be healed right now in jesus name partial or complete deafness be healed right now in jesus name partial or complete blindness be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Heart palpitations. Be healed in Jesus' name. Ulcers. Be healed in Jesus' name. The Lord is healing someone of pile. Pile. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Whether I mention your case or not, every ailment in your body let it bow to the name of jesus right now hallelujah please lift your hands we're wrapping up let me speak over your destiny every door that has refused to open over your life and destiny right now i stand upon the privilege of the grace of our father and in the name of jesus i speak to that door a father be open now doors of destiny be open now hear me every embargo of shame and reproach over anyone's life and any family by the mystery of the blood of jesus we tear off that veil of shame from your life failure at the edge of breakthrough that you always see it but never handle it right now in the name of jesus everything your eyes sees may your hands handle it in jesus name I pray for those of you who are students hear me if you are a student here in the name that is above all names the finishers anointing the grace to finish with honor I impart that grace upon you in Jesus name some of you because of the circumstances that have happened around your life there has been delays around your life by now you would have gone far but something delayed you i don't know who has been delayed in life by prophecy i push you to the next season of your life hallelujah 
finally by the privilege of God's election of grace and the honor of standing on this altar let me join my faith with your intercontinental pastor and our father in the Lord to prophesy over the youth the entire youth arm of the redeemed Christian Church of God everything that is alive grows therefore I stand on this altar and I declare by this time next year be ten times better than you are by this time next year be ten times better than you are regardless the region regardless the province be ten times better than you are spiritually financially hallelujah hear me and out of the people standing here may it please the lord to raise the next generation of leaders in this nation hallelujah thank you so much for this opportunity i want to say a big thank you to the intercontinental pastor the team of ministers and to all of you the rccg youth i love you with all my heart may the lord bless you go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.